Good afternoon all. I'm thinking this afternoon about my microchip pick microcontroller tutorials. Not so much the hardware this time. I think I've got that pretty much sorted out. This board, the pick kit 2 or possibly the pick kit 3. No, I'm concentrating this afternoon on the software, in particular the integrated development environment. And that's this thing here, MPLAB X IDE version 3.40. I installed this uh, yesterday. It's a massive installation. It's about half a gigabyte, I think. And I've sort of switched off as much clutter as I can on the screen. Now, the other problem with this is that everything is very tiny. So the usual trick of uh, turning my camera upside down, my camera, of course, is a phone. It's the Nexus 4 phone and uh, pointing it at the monitor I don't think really is going to work for this because there's all sorts of problems we've got uh, distortions because the camera's slightly angled up we've got these moray patterns you can see here all these interference patterns when the pixels of the monitor are related by some fractional ratio to the pixels inside the camera uh, you get flicker on here also just off the side of the monitor I've got my window and sometimes you can get sun streaming in and it causes sort of um, color distortions on the image so this isn't gonna work I'm gonna have to switch to uh, video capture software so I've got two massive learning curves here I've got the learning curve of learning cam studio now I have played with cam studio a little bit and I've kind of uh, worked out some of the bugs but then I've got the whole learning curve of learning MPLAB X IDE, which I've never really used before. I've always previously used MPLAB uh, version 8 IDE. So what are some of the issues with Cam Studio? Well, you start recording and it's capturing the screen, but look, it's terrible. The frames per second is three and a half frames per second. So that's no good. Let's stop that. Now it wants to save that file, so I won't do that. Um, now, I worked out that if you go into the video options and change this Cinepak codec, uh, codec by Radius to the Microsoft Video 1, I have no idea what any of this stuff is. But if I start recording now, I'm getting 7.5 frames per second. Well, that's much better. But why? Now, I really wanted to record in MP4. Um, because YouTube says uploading mp4s is quicker or easier or requires less processing or something like that So let's start a recording stop it uh, Save the file as something.mp4 AAA something like that Save it It starts saving that file and Then it crashes cam studio recorder has stopped working wonderful so I'm having to record to AVI files. They probably won't be as efficient when uploading to YouTube, but at least they work. Now, what about resolution? Well, I've... Oh, that's gone weird. Right, resolution. I've chosen 1280 by 720, which will give me 720p video files. Now, that's not the whole of my monitor. In fact, I'll pull the camera back a bit so you can see how much of my monitor it is. Right, I'm a long way back from my monitor. I don't normally come this far back, so let's start a recording. So 720p is as indicated by these flashing markers. So it's recording this part of the monitor, and that's quite useful because I can take Cam Studio itself and move it outside of that area so that I don't end up recording Cam Studio into Cam Studio. Now, the other thing with Cam Studio that you have to worry about is audio. It requires an audio source. I do have one USB microphone. It's on a kind of headset thing, but it's it's absolutely awful. I'll plug it in and we'll actually try it. But I just wanted to say that the nice thing about pointing my camera at the screen is that the microphone in my camera, which is actually a phone, it's my Nexus 4 phone, it's just there, it's built in and it just works. And it's reasonably close to uh, me, so the sound level is about right. And I can look at the screen of my camera. I'm always looking at the screen of my camera, not actually what I'm working on. 
so that I know that everything's in frame and everything's lit properly and focused and all that stuff. So this is going to be my audio source. Um, it's a headset. It's a BT one. It's quite old. I got it from Maplin uh, several years ago. Um, I bought three of these, I think, but uh, on two of them, these foam pads on the headphones actually just disintegrated and turned to dust. Um, I'm not sure whether there was a cover over the microphone, but this is quite poppy, I found. So I've wrapped a bit of microfiber around it to try and stop the popping on the microphone. But let's plug that in and actually do an audio and video capture directly off the monitor. Of course, the video will look fantastic, far better than pointing my camera at the screen. The audio, however, not so much. So this is my first video capture recording. Uh, it probably looks fantastic and sounds absolutely terrible because of this headset. So I think the headset's the first thing that's going to have to be replaced. I need a USB microphone that has a, a much better bandwidth. Uh, what are we getting in terms of frame rate? Well, that's not bad, 8.5 frames a second, but it does make the cursor movement a bit jerky, which is why I've turned on that green circle around the cursor so that you can see where I'm going. Now, what I need to do is move Cam Studio out, and now we can concentrate on MP Lab X IDE. Okay, seems that the uh, green cursor thing didn't work, so what's happening there? Uh, so, like I say, uh, steep learning curve. Uh, the old MP Lab 8, you could set up really sim in a really simple way. Uh, you could just bring in a file, quick build it, and produce output. Here, everything has to be in a project. So anyway, I've got my source file here, which actually is completely empty. And I've tried to do a build, which I do by hitting this hammer thing here. It does a build, and it is failing the build. So we've got an error. There's the error. Uh, let's see what it is. It expected end. OK, you expected end. You can have end. Let's type end in there. Do another build. And this time, we've got a warning. But the build is actually successful. Now, what's the warning? It says, found directive in column one, end. OK, so it doesn't like the directive being in column one. This is column one. Let's tab that in so it's not in column one. Do another build and see how we get on with that. Aha, build successful, no errors, no warnings. Well, that's absolutely terrific. So my source code is assembling. Of course, it doesn't do anything because all I've got is end. And end is an assembler directive. We're just telling the assembler that this is the end of the file. doesn't seem to like it if you don't put that in. So let's actually put in a PIC microcontroller instruction. I'll put in a couple of lines there. And I'm going to put in a no op, which is... Oh, no operation. So although it's an instruction, it's an instruction to the CPU to uh, execute it, but it doesn't actually do anything. OK, let's see if that will build. And that's failed again. And it says here, executable code and data must be defined in an appropriate section. Now that kept me guessing for quite a while, but it seems that if I put in an org, so another couple of lines, and I'm going to put in an org uh, zero. Now this is origin. I'm telling it that I want my object code, which will be uh, uh, the binary equivalent of the no operation, which I think is zero, to be located at location, memory location, zero. So everything's zeros at the moment. Let's see if that at least builds. Yep, that builds. No errors, no warnings. That's fantastic. Now we need to look at the program memory. So I need a new window. Uh, window, what have we got here? Pick memory views, program memory, that's what I want. Now that's appeared off screen, so let me bring that up. Now where am I going to put that? Uh, can I put it on the right hand side of this window? Uh, I'm not sure where I can put that really. I can put that on the left there. I don't seem to be able to put it on the right. Uh, well, let's put it on the left and see what that does. Okay, you can at least now see the program memory. 
uh, my output is now over here. This is a bit strange, this IDE. Everything seems to want to dock into position. But anyway, here's the program memory, and there is the no operation code. It's opcode 0. It's at address location 0. But what are these? I've got two instructions which I didn't program in. Return a, a literal into W0. Why have I got two of those? Uh, when I use MPLAB IDE 8, I don't get this. This is, I don't know, is it a bug? Or is it something that I'm just not aware of? Uh, I'm mystified. Right, one more thing. Uh, this program, this uh, video is not really about programming the microcontroller. It's really about me getting my head around this IDE. So I'm going to put in another couple of lines, and I'm going to put in a config statement uh, underscore underscore config, and I'll put it in as just zero for the moment. Um, I don't know what the default radix is. I'm assuming, in other words, the default number base. I'm assuming it's decimal, so it will interpret this as decimal, but let's just see what happens for the moment. Let's build that. My uh, build stuff is here. Yes, yeah, so the build is successful. That's fine. Now I need to look at the configuration bits, because that's what the underscore underscore config uh, directive does. Now where are they? Window, pick memory views, configuration bits. Right, they've appeared at the bottom of the screen, so I need to now bring those in. Where can I put those? Uh, there. No, that hasn't really helped. So I've kind of got everything I want here. Oh, my output is off the bottom of my recording area. Um, I've got a feeling that I can float these windows. Let's try that. Yes, yeah, so that floats out. So let's resize that so that it's I can at least see everything that's in it. Put it somewhere where we can uh, work with the original source code and these configuration bits. That kind of works. I can see program memory. My output's down here. If I do that, I can bring it back up. Oh, where's my other floating window? There it is. So I can kind of get everything where I want it, but it is a bit of a shambles. So what I've done is I've set the fuses to zero, and here you can see the value is zero, and that is that the fuses are low power crystal oscillator. Well, I didn't really want that. Watchdog timer disabled. Yes, I probably do want to disable that. Uh, GP3 can be either a digital I.O. or M clear. Well, this one is set to a digital I.O. and clear is internally tied to VDD. So that means that the chip now has no external reset pin. Um, let's try turning the config the other way round, which would be 0x for hexadecimal, uh, 3f F. Let's build that. My configuration bits have disappeared again. There they are. Uh, so that's build successful. Unfortunately, that's off the bottom of the screen. Actually, maybe I can raise that back up so it's visible. Yes, there it is. Let's put the whoops. Let's put the configuration bits. Where are they? They're there. Right. We now have configuration bits of 3FF. That is a resistor capacitor oscillator with a clock out function on GP4. Uh, now something weird's going on here. It seems to be putting the resistor capacitor oscillator stuff all over the watchdog timer field. So something's a bit buggy in this thing. Yes, I do want that. Right, watchdog timer is enabled. So yes, by setting the um, config to different hexadecimal values, I can choose different uh, oscillator configurations, watchdog, power on timer, master clear, brownout detect, and then the program memory code protect and the data memory code protect. So it's all kind of working. It's just I've got to try and get everything to fit on the screen within this area that is being recorded so that you guys can see what I'm doing. So you can probably see why I quite like resorting to just sticking my camera and pointing it at the monitor because it's so much easier than fiddling about with this screen capture software, which is buggy. I mean, I never got the little uh, highlighted circle around the cursor to work at all. But uh, obviously for, for this, where there's a whole load of stuff on the screen which you can barely see, it's not going to work pointing my uh, camera at the monitor. So I'm going to have to 
get to grips with this screen capture software. But at the same time, I'm going to have to get to grips with MP Lab X IDE, which is a nightmare in its own right. So a little way to go yet, but I'm working on it. And as soon as I get all this stuff sorted out, I'll start on the microcontroller tutorials. The first thing I'll do on those tutorials is set the configuration bits, uh, set up a suitable oscillator in the CPU, stick the output into a scope and just see that we've actually got a clock running. That'll be the first video, but uh, leave it with me for the moment. I'm still working on it. Quite a lot of things to iron out, uh, but for this video, that's kind of it. Just wanted to give you a flavor of what I'm doing. Uh, so I'll say cheerio.